Yesterday, Sierraji spoke about the seven bojangas in theory and practice, neither too briefly nor elaborately. If Sierraji were to expand on the topic of the seven bojangas, one month would not be enough. So he had to summarize so that the yogis would understand the most important points. And after the uh, completing discussing the bojangas, it's time to discuss the path factors, meganga. Meganga uh, is made up of, one word is maga, and maga means path, or road. A road is something that has been opened for travel. So where does this road, where do we take this road to? We travel this road to Avedita Sukha or Santi Sukha. And what is it that we travel this road with? We travel it by means of the practice. The word maganga has two parts, maga and anga. And maga means path or road. And this path has eight parts. So these eight parts are called maganga or path factors. The first is Samadeti Meganga. Second is Samasankapa Meganga. Third is Samavacha Meganga. The fourth is Samakamanta Meganga. The fifth is Samajiva Meganga. Sixth is Sama Vayama Meganga, seventh Sama Sati Meganga, and eighth Sama Samadhi Meganga. So there are eight parts to this path. But in terms of groups, there are three groups, and therefore three parts if we look in that way. One group is Samavacha, Samakamanta, Samajiva. Ajiva, that is one group of three. And another group of three is Samavayama, Samasati, and Samasamadi. And then the remaining group is Samaditi and Samasankapa. So in terms of groups, there are three. And these three groups are also called Seka or trainings. So there are, the tra- there are three parts to training, three ways of training, and these are called also meganga, which is a compound word in Pali. So sila, samadhi, and panya. These three trainings are for um, are, are for eliminating the coarse uh, things that are done or said to harm others. It is the training of sila that dispels these. And then there's <clears throat> the coarseness that occurs in the mind. and also the roots of coarseness, the very seeds of coarse behavior. So there are these three levels of coarseness and these trainings. The training of sila eliminates the, the, the gross form which uh, of violations or transgressions in, in, of, that are physical and verbal. 
and the training of samadhi is used to eliminate the wild behavior that occurs in the mind. The training of panya, panya maganga, eliminates the very roots of wild, of wild behavior. So there are these three things to eliminate and three ways, therefore, to eliminate. And this is also called a teaching, the sasana in Pali. It's also called uh, instruction. And these are trainings which make our physical, verbal, and mental behavior civilized. These three trainings or teachings called sasana in Pali. Those who have not practiced or who have not developed the eight path factors think they are difficult. The Buddha taught the theory and if one approaches a true kalyana metta, a true spiritual friend, and practices systematically, then these eight <coughs> Eight path factors are developed <coughs> automatically. The Buddha said, Chataro me bhikkhave aradam. So what, there are four things that are to be initiated. And these four things are the four foundations of mindfulness, the four kinds of satipatthana. That means that every time a physical action arises, one has to apply ardent effort to observe it with steadfast observation. Kaya nupasana satipatthana. Every time a feeling, vedana, feeling good or bad, arises, one has to apply ardent effort to observe it with steadfast observation. Vedana Nupasana Satipatthana. Every time there's thinking, various types of consciousness, every time they arise, one has to observe them, applying ardent effort so that one has steadfast observation, Chitta Nupasana Satipatthana. And every time there is a process, a general object. Every time something like that arises, one has to observe it with art and effort and steadfast observation, Dhamma Nupasana Satipatthana. For the person who develops these four kinds of Satipatthana systematically, the eight path factors are automatically developed. There's nothing strange or extraordinary about it. So, <clears throat> how are the eight path factors developed? How do they arise when we practice satipatthana? Let's say we put our mind on the abdomen and in the abdomen as we breathe in or out, the abdomen expands, rises, and, and as we breathe out, it falls back down. So this rising is just the term that we use in whatever language we speak, rising or falling. So these, this rising or expanding and falling, these are manner, these are called in Pali, akara. So they're, they're the, or position is another word. So the form is the abdomen, the shape of the abdomen. That's one, one way of seeing. And rising and falling is the position, or akara, the position that it's in. And then there's sabhava, the individual true nature among the basic four great elements that make up the body, 
The easiest one to see is Vyodhatu, the air element. And this is this manifests or this shows itself as stiffness or tightness, movement, displacement. So there are these three Santana. Uh, sometimes we have to say what it is that appears when we report to the teacher what is it that we see the yogis have to say and so one way of seeing is santana or form another is the akara or manner and the third is sabhava or individual true nature and at the start one isn't able to just follow every single rising and falling uh, time and again we catch some and we miss some and we also uh, we can't catch the thinking that happens either uh, we can't catch it, catch it again and again but we have to try to catch the rising and the falling and thinking when it occurs and feelings and when we practice eventually we we become good and sometimes the mind reaches it it it, it re- contacts the abdomen and sometimes it contacts the manner of the abdomen's rising and falling at the start this is good because the mind is not going somewhere else it's staying where we put it and it is staying because of this effort that is made virya this is some of your some of i am up the one makes the effort to make the mind stick to the object so in this also we have the uh, energy of aiming is also being applied so that the mind will be in focus So sometimes when we watch the abdomen sometimes the mind sticks to the form of the abdomen and this is good sometimes the mind sticks to the to the akara the manner of rising or falling and this too is not bad sometimes Uh, the mind falls on this expanding and collapsing of the abdomen and so when the mind this mind that is staying with the object when we make the attempt to observe it this mind is clean so when this clean mind develops good energy then sometimes we see true nature mixed in with with the form or the manner so one one knows stiffness the mind falls on stiffness and at that moment one knows stiffness and sometimes the mind falls on tightness one knows the tightness sometimes the mind falls on movement and one knows the movement so one starts to know the true nature that is there but it's not clean yet because it's still sometimes mixed in with the form the shape you know or the akara the manner so the yogis just have to be patient they have to be patient and observe and just keep on trying so and some when the mind wanders the mind they have to observe it and sometimes there will be aches and pains and so on one also has to observe these uh, one is, one's observation is not to remove discomfort to remove pain but it is to know sometimes teachers tell the yogis that they have to uh, observe and get rid of it and this is not what we're doing we are just trying to do two things we are trying to keep the mind from going somewhere else and we are trying to know what the object is so uh, 
Some people think that they have to get rid of pain, but this is not so. There is nothing in the text which say one has to remove pain. What is said is anupasana. Anupasana means repeatedly observing, noting and knowing. So one has to watch things, observe with patience. And at the start, we are making effort, virya, and this is correct effort. It's, the mind isn't going somewhere else, and we are making effort not in order to develop unwholesomeness, but in order to keep the mind clean. So this is correct effort. And also sati sticks to the object. And this is correct sati. The mind also is collected on the object by samadhi. And this is correct too. So because these factors of virya, sati, and samadhi are correct, are right, there's an adjective used to describe these, which is sama. So there's sama, sama virya, sama sati, sama samadhi, right effort, right observation, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So the results arise immediately because with virya, the kilesas have no chance to arise. And if they do arise, then one has to eliminate them by noting them, observing them. This is like preventing fires. With fire prevention, we have to to, um, set up, we have to make, take measures so that Uh, so that fire does not break out. But if it does break out, we have to put it out right away. So this is how we have to make effort uh, in the practice. And if we are able to do like this, then the path factors of the group of samadhi, samadhi maganga, is occurring. With the path factor of virya, Kilesas have no chance to arise. They're not accepted. And with the path factor of sati, the mind is guarded. It is protected. With the path factor of samadhi, the mind falls collectedly on the object. And if one observes every second, then in one minute, that's 60 times that this samadhi group is being developed. If we just observe every other second, then in one minute there will be 30 times that the samadhi group is developed. And only if one calculates like this will one get the results. At the start of the practice, we have to work starting with an easy object. And in sitting, The rising and the falling of the abdomen is the easiest object because the in-breath and the out-breath are there. And so the rising and the falling happens. So we put our mind on the abdomen and we wait there. And as soon as the rising arises, we make ardent effort to push the mind so that it gets there. As soon as the falling arises, We make effort pushing the mind so that it gets to that falling. The word atapa is used. That means one has to have ardent effort. And also the word vayama is used, which means trying, making effort. And this effort is called samavayama. So at At the start, though, it's not very strong. Okay, so, but sometimes people really want to gain the Dhamma. 
they really want to know. So sometimes what happens is the zeal to uh, get to the object, the chanda, is, is ex- too great, is, is very strong. And at that time, our effort, virya, becomes excessive, and then we miss the object. On the other hand, sometimes the effort is too loose, too slack, and then the mind is not able to reach the object. So um, this, this is what happens at the start. There's either excess, too much effort, or not enough, a lack. And in order not to have, um, in order not to have excess effort or to have slack effort, one needs to use the jhanic factor of aiming. And that means to uh, develop the ability to focus on the object accurately. And this aiming is is called in Pali Vitaka. Although it is sometimes translated as thinking, it's not thinking, it's more uh, aim to aim or to focus the mind. Because of aiming, we are able to get the object into focus. So one has to um, one has to also get the mind to be there. So on one hand, there's the energy that is needed to push the mind to the object. And on the other hand, there's the energy that is needed to aim the mind so that we can observe accurately. And when one gains practice, when one observes the rising, the mind is able to connect with it. It's, it, it's as though it rubs against the object or hits it. And at that time, if, one, if the mind rubs against the object, connects with it, hits it, contacts it, then one becomes definite about what is there. So the energy of pushing the mind to the object and the energy of aiming the mind accurately must always be there. The yogi always has to apply these. And then what happens is the mind will hit the object and will become definite about what is there. So uh, one must do this every second of the time or at least every other second. One individual moment of this effort in aiming and contacting the object is not much. It doesn't have much strength as just one moment. But when one moment and another are next to each other, connect closely, uh, then they they become very strong. And this is what one has to do. This virya makes the mind so that it doesn't get cold and gelid. It keeps laziness from entering the mind. It heats up the mind. And then the mind doesn't become cold and, and stiff. If one applies effort as soon as the object arises so that the mind gets there, then the mind won't be sleepy. This is the immediate result that we get. And when the aim is there so that the mind is focused, this aiming opposes Tina Mita, sloth and torpor. Sloth and torpor ca- cause the mind to lose all its energy, and therefore the mind becomes sluggish. But with aiming, the mind is fresh. And so the first thing that one has to fight off is this uh, sleepiness, sloth and torpor. Virya is what gets the upper hand over laziness. 
virya can and can get the better of laziness and vitaka or aiming keeps the mind fresh without aiming the mind can become like cold butter unworkable but vitaka keeps the mind fresh and alert so every time one observes these qualities must be there of effort and aiming and then automatically one will one's mind will connect with the object and one will become definite about what it is when one observes the rising or the falling or other objects one will one will be definite about what one has observed previously because of not being able to connect with the object accurately rub against it the mind was unsure the mind was wavering and this is called vici kecha doubt but when the mind is able to rub against the object and contact it this conquers vici kecha or doubt and this is the immediate benefit gained so at this time virya is there samati is is developed samadhi is also developed and then there's the factor of aiming uh, so that the mind starts to rub against the object and one's observation is effective and accurate so how will it be at that time then when the mind observes the rising and it observes it effectively then one will come to know what is there one knows when the mind observes the falling it will observe effectively and know what is there so this knowledge this knowing is called diti in pali and this means vision or or seeing knowing this is seeing what is really there so it is correct seeing samadhi and when one is aiming at the object directing the mind in the right way this is samasankapa and then samadhi together with these this is the wisdom group of the path panya meganga when every with every object that is observed there's virya sati and samadhi the factors of the samadhi group and there's aiming and knowing which are the two fa- factors of the panya part of the path so 3 plus 2 that makes 5 and this is called panchangika mega the path leading to nibbana which has five parts at that moment the yogis are not actually encountering any obs- any uh, opportunity to transgress to break their sila so there is not actually the type of sila that avoids doing something wrong avoidance or refraining is called virati so this virati sila the sila that is there when we actually avoid refrain from doing wrong in the in a practical way this is not there during the moment of practice but chaitanya sila the intention to keep right speech I say yeah right speech right action and right livelihood this is there on the in- intentional level so we can say that the three path factors of the uh, sila path are there or in another way uh, the the type of sila that is called indriya samvara sila the the good moral behavior that comes about through restraining the sense doors guarding the eye door the ear door the nose door the tongue door and the mouth these faculties are all under control 
and therefore this too, in another way, <clears throat> this is also called sila. So the three parts of the path that make up sila are present together with the five parts of the path that are involved every moment of observation. All the eight path factors are present. The three parts making up the sila group, the three parts making up the samadhi group, and the two parts that make up the panya group. Therefore, the eight parts of the path to Nibbana are all there, or the eight causes for Nibbana are all there. So now, if one reaches this situation, the Buddha said, Yesan kesan hi bekowe chataro satipatana arada. When, when whoever it is who develops the four foundations of mindfulness, that means that every newly arising object, one is observing it. And sometimes that newly arising object will be kaya, physical, and there will be the observation, repeated observation of kaya, kaya nupasana, satipatthana. Sometimes Vedana will arise and there will be Vedana Nupasana Satipatthana, the repeated observation of feeling, good or bad. Sometimes the mind will, types of consciousness will arise and then there will be repeated observation of the consciousness, Chitta Nupasana Satipatthana. When various objects arise, general objects, there will be the repeated observation of Dhamma Nupasana, Satipatthana. Because one observes one or another of these types of objects, then automatically the Eightfold Path is developed. Aradho te sang atangiko mago samadukakiyagami. Whoever develops any one of these four foundations of mindfulness, for them, this path, uh, our raddo, it is automatically developed. And what is automatically, automatically developed is atangiko mago, the eightfold path that, it, that Sierraji has just been speaking about, the three trainings of sila, samadhi, and panya this path is automatically developed. This path is, um, when, these, when this, this path is also described as Ario. And when these factors are complete, then one's physical and verbal behavior is clean and pure. One isn't transgressing. And the word for pure in, in Pali is Arya. Arya also me means pure and it also means excellent. When the factors of virya, sati, and samadhi are occurring continuously, then the obsessive kilesas have no chance to arise in the mind. The pariyotana kilesas are eliminated. When knowledge arises, then the roots of the kilesas are eliminated. So this path, this eightfold path, is pure and excellent. And the way the Buddha spoke was extremely precise and true to what actually happens. The word ario, pure and clean, when something is free of dirt, free of defilements, then there's purity and pure and clean. Defilements cause trouble, cause suffering, dukkha, and they make one low. So if one is pure, then if one is not, if one sila, if one does not keep sila, 
then one won't be able to control the mind and, not, and develop knowledge. So in this way, uh, one will come to suffering. This path is described as sama dukkha gami. Sama means this path is systematic and correct. And gami means that it leads to. So where does it lead to? Kaya means the end of, and dukkha means suffering. This is the systematic path which leads to the end of suffering. 